In the listening comprehension section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand spoken English. There are three parts to this section with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers in this test. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers on the screen and select the best answer by clicking on it. Here is an example. On the recording, you hear, I don't like this painting very much. Neither do I. What does the man mean? On the screen, you read, A. He does not like the painting either. B. He does not know how to paint. C. He does not have any paintings. D. He does not know what to do. You learn from the conversation that neither the man nor the woman likes the painting. The best answer to the question, what does the man mean, is A. He does not like the painting either. Therefore, the correct choice is A. Question 1. Should I lock up the computer lab now before I go home? Don't bother. I'm not leaving for a while. I can check it on my way out. What will the woman probably do? Question 2. Do you mind if I turn the television off? Well, I'm in the middle of watching a program. What does the woman imply? Question 3. I heard the math requirements for graduation are being changed. Yes, and I may be short one course. What does the man mean? Directions. In Part B, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers on the screen and select the best answer by clicking on it. Questions 4 through 7. Listen to part of a conversation between a student and a professor. Hi, Professor Adams. My name is Larry. Hi, Larry. How can I help you? I was told that you place students in internships for various university programs. Yes. Well, I'm interested in the internship at the University Art Museum. What responsibilities interns have, what qualifications they need to have. Sorry, those positions are all filled for this year. Oh, but I just saw the announcement on the museum website this morning. Unfortunately, the website is out of date. I want to do museum work after I graduate, and the job experience would look great on my resume. Plus, it's the only paid internship on campus. I understand. However, there are some other ways to get some work experience, even if it's not exactly what you want. For instance, the library is looking for student volunteers. The library? But... Well, they're planning an exhibition of photographs documenting the history of the university. And they're looking for student volunteers to help go through the archives and select images that'll show how the university's changed over the last hundred years. Hmm. Now, that's only a four-week project, I think. And, of course, it's unpaid. But it would be something to put on my resume. Exactly. Why don't you read the job description? It's posted on the library's website. If you're interested, let me know, and I'll put in a good word for you with Emily Peterson. She's the library's exhibitions director and will be interviewing applicants. Okay, I'll do that right away. Question 4. What do the speakers mainly discuss?
Question 5. Why is the student disappointed? Question 6. What will be displayed in the exhibition at the University Library? Question 7. What can be inferred about the library's exhibitions director, Emily Peterson? Directions. In Part C of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers on the screen and select the best answer by clicking on it. Here is an example. On the recording you hear, listen to an instructor talk to his class about a television program. I'd like to tell you about an interesting TV program that will be shown this coming Thursday. It'll be on from 9 to 10 p.m. on Channel 4. It's part of a series called Mysteries of Human Biology. And the subject of the program is the human brain, how it functions and how it can malfunction. Topics that will be covered are dreams, memory, and depression. These topics are illustrated with outstanding computer animation that makes the explanations easy to follow. Make an effort to see this show. Since we've been studying the nervous system in class, I know you'll find it very helpful. Now, listen to a simple question. What is the main purpose of the program? On the screen, you read, A. To demonstrate the latest use of computer graphics. B. To discuss the possibility of an economic depression. C. To explain the workings of the brain. D. To dramatize a famous mystery story. The best answer to the question, what is the main purpose of the program, is C. To explain the workings of the brain. Therefore, the correct choice is answer C. Now, listen to another sample question. Why does the professor recommend watching the program? On the screen, you read, a. It is required of all science majors. B. It will feature the professor's research. C. It can help viewers improve their memory skills. D. It will help with coursework. The best answer to the question, why does the speaker recommend watching the program, is D. It will help with coursework. Therefore, the correct choice is answer D. Questions 8 through 10. Listen to a talk in an animal behavior class. Today's discussion is about a common animal reaction, the yawn. The dictionary defines a yawn as an involuntary reaction to fatigue or boredom. That's certainly true for human yawns, but not necessarily for animal yawns. The action can have quite different meaning in different species. For example, some animals yawn to intimidate intruders on their territory. Fish and lizards are examples of this. Hippos use yawns when they want to settle a quarrel. Observers have seen two hippos yawn at each other for as long as two hours before they stop quarreling. As for social animals like baboons or lions, they yawn to establish the pecking order within social groups. And lions often yawn to calm social tensions. Sometimes animals yawn for a strictly physiological reason, that is, to increase oxygen levels. And curiously enough, when they yawn for a physical reason like that, they do what humans do. They try to stifle the yawn by looking away or by covering their mouths. Question 8. What is the speaker's main point? Question 9. According to the speaker, 
When are hippos likely to yawn? Question 10. What physiological reason for yawning is mentioned?